in order to keep the system going, they can't let money supply decline. But they've let money supply decline, which tells me the plan is to tank the entire credit system. And that's how you will own nothing. The you'll be happy part, I don't know what they're going to put in the water or the air, but that's how you'll own nothing when credit collapses. You're watching Silver News Daily. Like this video and subscribe to the channel for the best news that you don't want to miss. Now let's get straight to it. Imagine for a moment a reality where the ordinary becomes extraordinary, where the overlooked and undervalued silver transforms into a cornerstone of wealth for those in the know. This isn't a far-off fantasy. It's a looming reality on the brink of unfolding before our very eyes. David Morgan, renowned as the silver guru, has laid bare a future where silver's price isn't just rising, it's skyrocketing to heights unprecedented, potentially reaching $3,000 an ounce. What we're witnessing isn't merely an investment opportunity, it's a once-in-a-lifetime chance to secure wealth in ways most can only dream of. With demand soaring as inventories dwindle to critical lows, the stage is set for a seismic shift in the value of silver. This isn't about market speculation, it's about understanding the undercurrents of supply and demand that are aligning to propel silver into the stratosphere. As you watch, keep this in mind, the time to act is now, before silver becomes the most sought-after asset in the world, turning those who dare to believe and act into the millionaires of tomorrow. Stay tuned as we unravel the compelling reasons behind this monumental rise, and how you can position yourself to not just witness, but be an integral part of this historic wealth transfer. So, there has been a guy, there's a guy that uh, works with Miles Franklin, and he goes by Silver Slayer. And he, I don't have time to listen to all the silver commentators. I just really don't. But I happened to listen to one of his commentaries, and it was uh, regarding another um, commentator in the silver world. And he's basically sp spoken, excuse me, speaking that there's never been a deficit before. <clears throat> and that's fundamentally incorrect. So to set the record straight, in fact, I reached out to him and uh, never got a response. And he's busy. I'm not. I'm not here to critique him. He was just basically um, summarizing what another person had put in writing, which is very inaccurate. So if you just go to what I consider modern times, which means my lifetime, <clears throat> the biggest silver deficit we've ever experienced in my lifetime was from 1990 to 2005 inclusive. In 1990, the above ground silver supply, and when I say silver, I'm referring to 1,000-ounce commercial bars, was 2 billion ounces. And the average drawdown or deficit, so for supply and demand to equal, they have to come from somewhere. And if you're not mining and recycling as much as demand has, it has to be drawn down from above ground inventory. So from 1990 to 2005, the average drawdown was 100 million ounces a year. And that was 15 consecutive years in a row. And we went from 2 billion ounces above ground supply to 500 million. We had eaten up from above ground supply 1.5 billion ounces of silver. And yet, if you look at the price chart in 2005, silver is about eight bucks. Even though, so you, you asked the supply demand question. I mean, if you'd lost that much wheat or that much you know, oil or any other commodity on the board, and you'd lost, <clears throat> you know, three quarters of it over a 15-year period, and it was known amongst the commodities people, I doubt you would see a price as low as silver was. But regardless, that's what... As we dive deeper into the heart of our silver saga, we find ourselves at a critical juncture, peering into the complexities of a market that's simmering with potential, yet played by undercurrents that could sway the unwary. It's here, in the analysis provided by David Morgan, that we uncover the pillars supporting the monumental claim of silver reaching $3,000 an ounce. This isn't about mere speculation. It's a narrative built on solid ground. Demand for silver is not just growing. It's accelerating at a pace that the current supply can scarcely keep up with. Why is this significant, you might wonder? Silver, often seen as gold's lesser counterpart, holds unparalleled value in not just the investment world, but also in industrial applications that are pivotal to our modern economy. From renewable energy solutions to the latest electronic gadgets, silver's role is both foundational and irreplaceable. This dual demand, both as a precious metal and an industrial commodity, sets the stage for a supply crunch that could send prices soaring. But let's not stop at mere observation. 
The question we should be asking ourselves is, what does this mean for the average investor? It signifies an opportunity, one that's grounded in the realignment of economic powers and the push towards sustainable technologies. As the world leans more into green energy, the demand for silver, a key component in solar panels and electric vehicles, is expected to balloon. This isn't just a fleeting trend, it's a paradigm shift towards recognizing the true value of what's been dubbed the people's metal. And let's not forget the call to action, a reminder that in the world of investment, timing is everything. If the predictions hold true, those positioning themselves now in the silver market stand to reap benefits that are nothing short of transformative. So as we continue this journey, I urge you to ponder not just the potential winefall, but the broader implications of a world where silver takes center stage in our economic and technological advancements. I invite you to join the conversation, to share your thoughts and perspectives. What do you think about the future of silver? Is it the investment opportunity of a lifetime, or a speculative bubble waiting to burst? Your insights are valuable, and this dialogue could shed light on aspects of the silver market that many have yet to consider. Remember, this is more than just an analysis. It's an exploration into a future where the value of silver could redefine wealth and investment strategies for generations to come. Stay with us as we delve deeper into the more factors more driving this unprecedented more more opportunity in the silver market. The power is coming back to the people from the globalists to these big nation states, to sovereign states, to sovereign people. <clears throat> and that's the trend. And it starts in one state, and then it's 14. And then it's just state taxes are removed. And then it is no capital gains on money. If my silver buys me, you know, my ounce of silver buys me five gallons of gas in 2024 and 10 gallons of gas in 2025, so be it. You know, it's, it's lawful money. We don't have any right to tax lawful money. And that's really never come off the books. Uh, so, and one more thing, and this is um, a bit remiss on my part, but I am going to do a podcast on this very, very topic. And I'll include you on the distribution list when I do it. But we're going to try to go state by state. I mean, not all 50, but which ones have what status, which ones are playing, and which ones have got the most momentum. The only problem, if you want to call it that, with going back to honest money, which has been my life's purpose, is how do you do it in today's modern world? And the answer is you put it in a depository and you have a debit card that you can charge against it. To put silver eagles on the counter and buy groceries is lawful in many states, <clears throat> but what do you do? Do you give change in constitutional silver, quarters, and dimes? Do you pay in fiat? What price do you do? Do you get on your phone and check the LBMA close? Do you get the spot price when the market is still in motion in the, in the United States? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot to it because it's treated as a commodity, right? So, but with a debit card system, as long as everybody agrees that we'll use the close of New York the day before, and you clear at that price, and in the long term, it's all going to balance out. If you get an up day, you might gain a little bit, but you know, unless you're spending your life savings in one fell swoop, in the aggregate on a long term average, it's going to work in your favor. It'll be, it'll work just fine. So there's my long winded answer, but honestly. We have to pay attention because, again, not only seeing the top, but seeing what the counter trend is. And the counter trend is clearly there and it's gaining. As we move forward, unfolding the layers of the silver market's potential, we encounter a shadow that looms large over its shimmering promise, the specter of shrinking inventories. This isn't a mere hiccup in the global supply chain. It's a glaring signal of a deeper, more systemic ship that's underway. The storied vaults of the LBNA, CONDX, and various ETFs are witnessing a steady depletion of silver stocks, a trend that's not just alarming but revelatory. It tells us that the physical silver, the actual tangible asset investors seek to hold, is becoming scarcer by the day. But why does this matter? In a world driven by digital transactions and virtual assets, the physicality of silver harks back to a foundational principle of value, scarcity. As inventories dwindle, the basic economic tenet of supply and demand comes into sharp focus, painting a picture of rising prices. Yet, this is not merely about investors scrambling for a slice of the silver pie. It's a testament to silver's enduring appeal and utility. Consider for a moment the industrial demand for silver, a demand that's not just stable but growing. 
This isn't just about jewelry or silverware. It's about high-tech applications, from photovoltaic cells powering the green revolution to the latest in electronics. Silver's unique properties, its unparalleled conductivity, and antibacterial qualities make it indispensable. And as the world leans more into sustainable practices and innovative technologies, this demand is only set to increase. Herein lies the crux of the issue, as industrial demand rises and investment interest grows. The available supply of silver is being squeezed from both ends. This dynamic sets the stage for a potential price explosion, a scenario where those holding silver could see their investments appreciate dramatically. It's a situation fraught with both opportunity and caution, a delicate balance between seizing the moment and understanding the market forces at play. In this context, our call to action becomes even more pertinent. The window for securing silver at prices that don't reflect its impending scarcity is narrowing. For those looking to diversify their portfolios or hedge against inflationary pressures, the message is clear. The time to act is now. As we continue to navigate the twists and turns of the silver market, keep this in mind. In the realm of investments, foresight, and timing are everything. Missing the boat on silver today could mean missing out on one of the decades defining financial opportunities. So let me pose a question to you, our savvy viewers. With the evidence mounting, how are you positioning yourself in the silver market? Are you ready to ride the wave of its potential ascension, or are you still on the fence weighing the risks? Engage with us, share your strategies, thoughts, and concerns. The journey into the silver market is complex, but it's one that could lead to unparalleled rewards. Well, there's obvious, there, it's not obvious on the charts or the daily commentators. There's pretty good price pressure to the upside, even though we're off today and you know, it's been that way, and it's so frustrating to, you know, to the general silver investor, let alone someone that really knows the numbers and can see behind them, so to speak. But <clears throat> my forecast for gold this year is a high of about 2,500. Silver, I'm looking for <clears throat> maybe a possible touch to 30 or near there. But I think 30, and this is more of a guesstimate than a, a knowledge-based statement. That area is really defended heavily. I mean, if you go back to the start of the silver squeeze movement with Wall Street Silver, it's been some time now. And when we got to the near 30 level and just couldn't push through it, and then Rostam Benham comes out and say they need to tap down, tamp down the silver market. Are you kidding me? I mean, it's so blatantly obvious if you pay attention and you're objective minded. And of course, I am biased about silver, but I'm also capable of being objective. I mean, that's a fact. That's what he said. And why would someone associated with the CFTC make a statement like that in public? I'm private. Okay, fine. But in public? So I think that this year we will see upward pressure probably by the, by the end of the year. And maybe someone will go rogue, not necessarily an institution. A uh, bullion bank may drop out. <clears throat> and you may see a pension fund or two or three or sovereign wealth fund or even family offices or maybe just the crypto world where there's more ab you know more people adapting to blockchain based precious metals holdings which i actually forecast may be the big winner in 2024 it may be wrong but uh you know a lot of these cryptos are based on nothing more than a name and there's no you know they're just a fancy fiat on the blockchain. Well, what good does that do anyone, really? In my view, very little. So I think you're going to see more and more pressure. And the institutions, you know, I just yell out again for the fourth time, where are you? And why are you? Peeling back another layer of our intricate silver saga, we now delve into the enigmatic world of market manipulation and price suppression. This is not the realm of conspiracy theories. It's a critical discussion point for investors and analysts alike who observe unusual patterns and inconsistencies within the silver market. The question arises, why despite surging demand and dwindling supplies, has silver's price not catapulted to the levels some experts predict? The answer may lie within the shadowy corners of large institutional investments and the mechanisms of market manipulation. Historically, there have been allegations and instances where the silver market appeared to be influenced by significant players, whose actions could potentially keep prices artificially low. This manipulation, whether through massive short selling or opaque derivative contracts, can create a misleading representation of silver's true market value. Understanding these dynamics is crucial for anyone looking to navigate the silver market successfully. It's not just about recognizing the potential for manipulation, 
but adapting investment strategies to mitigate these influences. The savvy investor must ask, how can one position oneself in a market that may be subject to such forces? The answer lies in diligence, research, and a keen understanding of market signals. Moreover, this discussion highlights the importance of transparency and regulation within the commodities markets. For silver's price to reflect its true demand and supply dynamics, the market must operate freely, without undue influence from large entities. This is a call to action for market regulators and participants alike to advocate for practices that ensure market integrity. Now let's pivot our focus toward actionable insights. Knowing the potential for manipulation, investors should consider diversifying their approach to silver. This might include physical silver holdings, silver mining stocks, and ETFs, each offering different risk and reward dynamics. Furthermore, staying informed and agile, ready to adapt to market changes, becomes paramount in such a volatile environment. Before we move on, I encourage you to engage with this topic further. What are your views on market manipulation in the silver market? Have you observed instances that raise questions, or do you believe the market functions as a fair reflection of supply and demand? Your insights and experiences are invaluable as we navigate these complex waters together. Remember, understanding the intricacies of market manipulation is not about deterrence from investing in silver. It's about empowering ourselves with knowledge to make informed decisions. As we continue to unravel the silver market. Now, from 2006 until the last year or so, we've been building it sorry, above ground. And we've gone back to about 2.5 billion ounces. There's no perfect number. Some people just make them up. I try to, you know, cite all my work, but there's a difference between what the Silver Institute says, Metals Focus says, and CPM Group says. So I try to just kind of give a, a stab in there where they're all pretty much within a ballpark of that number. So if you want to ask, is the supply growing or dwindling? And you look at the above ground supply as the only way to measure it. The answer has been growing. And part of the reason was the Industrial Revolution in China. And when did that start? I don't know. No one has an exact date. You see the early 2000s. And there was a commodities boom, a super cycle. I mean, the Chinese needed copper, iron ore, tin, nickel, silver you know, concrete, lumber, I mean, you name it, any commodity across the board was very, very much in demand for what was a build out 15 years, 20 years, you know, but that ceased uh, not come to a zero, but the growth factor is certainly less than it was during the, the heyday of the Chinese build out. So now we come to your question and or the people's question, and that is, you know, where's the inventory coming from? Well, first of all, you know, the deficit that the Silver Institute refers to is valid. There's been more offtake in either investment or industry than there's been mining, supply, and recycling. So that number is valid. And you, what we have to do is look at the obvious, which I'm pretty sure you imply. And that is, oh, wait a minute, the LBMA inventory is down. The COMEX inventory is down. And what's really not talked about enough, in my view, is that the ETF inventories are down. So the supply has to come from somewhere, and I would suggest it's coming from the LBMA, the COMEX, and the ETFs. The problem is, how do you keep it this low in price and meet that demand, which has always been the really big question you can think about. Because even though the paper markets rule the silver market more than any other futures market, the paper market still, or maybe oil's more manipulated than silver, believe it or not. Regardless, that's it. Venturing deeper into our exploration of the silver market, we encounter an aspect that often goes unnoticed, yet holds significant sway over silver's value, the gold-silver ratio. This ratio, which measures how many ounces of silver it takes to buy one ounce of gold, isn't just a number. It's a barometer of relative value between these two precious metals. Historically, when the ratio is high, it suggests that silver is undervalued compared to gold, presenting a potential buying opportunity for those looking to capitalize on this disparity. As we stand today, the gold-silver ratio remains at historically high levels. This implies that silver, the so-called poor man's gold, may not just be undervalued but poised for a substantial upward correction. The implications of this are profound for investors seeking opportunities in undervalued assets. 
By swapping gold for silver or increasing their allocation towards silver, investors could significantly benefit from any adjustment in the ratio to its historical average. However, the decision to invest based on the gold-silver ratio should not be taken lightly. It requires a nuanced understanding of the factors that influence both gold and silver prices, including macroeconomic indicators, monetary policy, and industrial demand. For instance, a shift in industrial demand for silver, due to its use in technologies like solar panels and electronics, could independently drive silver prices up, irrespective of gold's performance. This leads us to a crucial call to action for potential investors. Given the current high gold-silver ratio, now may be an opportune time to assess your investment portfolio's metal allocation. Consider whether diversifying into silver could offer not only a hedge against inflation, but also a unique growth opportunity, should the ratio marrow and silver's price appreciate relative to gold. I encourage you to ponder this. How does the gold-silver ratio influence your view on investing in silver? Do you see it as a temporary anomaly or a long-term opportunity to capitalize on the undervaluation of silver? Your perspectives on this could offer invaluable insights as we collectively navigate the complexities of precious metal investing. In conclusion, while the gold-silver ratio is just one of many factors to consider, its current level suggests a compelling case for a closer examination of silver as an investment. As we move forward, keep in mind the importance of due diligence and a well-rounded understanding of the market dynamics at play. Stay with us as we continue to delve into the factors that could drive silver to new heights offering a potentially lucrative journey for those ready to embark on it. As we pivot our gaze towards a burgeoning movement across the United States, a compelling narrative unfolds, one that could significantly impact the silver market and, by extension, its investors. States are increasingly championing the cause for honest money, spearheading initiatives to recognize gold and silver as legal tender. This movement isn't just a nostalgic return to the days of precious metals backing currency. It's a modern-day pushback against centralized monetary control a quest for financial sovereignty, and a reevaluation of what constitutes real value in our economy. This trend towards the adoption of gold and silver as legal tender marks a pivotal moment, signifying a growing distrust in fiat currencies and the systems that govern them. It underscores a collective yearning for a monetary system that values transparency, stability, and intrinsic worth, qualities inherently embodied by precious metals. For silver, particularly, this movement could catalyze a significant shift in demand dynamics. As more states legalize silver as a medium of exchange, we could witness an uptick in its utilization, not just as an investment asset but as a functional currency. This dual identity of silver, both as a store of value and a medium of exchange, enhances its appeal, potentially driving its value upwards. But the implications extend beyond mere economics. The movement for honest money is a testament to a broader societal shift, a reawakening to the principles of individual sovereignty and financial independence. It challenges the status quo, prompting us to question the very foundations of our current monetary system and explore alternatives that offer a semblance of control and security in an increasingly volatile world. Here lies a call to action for those tuned into the evolving narrative of silver and the broader financial landscape, engaging with, and possibly even supporting, initiatives that advocate for gold and silver as legal tender could not only shape the future trajectory of these metals but also align with the philosophy that values durability and substance in the face of fleeting digital currencies and unstable fiat systems. As we contemplate this movement's potential to reshape the silver market, let's also reflect on the deeper philosophical questions it raises. What does it mean for an asset to be considered real money? How do we navigate the transition towards a system that integrates the timeless value of precious metals with the technological advancements of our age? I invite you to join the conversation to share your thoughts on the significance of this movement towards honest money and its implications for silver. Your insights could illuminate the path forward as we continue to explore the multifaceted role of silver in our economies and our lives. In our next segment, we'll delve into the industrial demand that underpins silver's intrinsic value, further unraveling the complex tapestry of factors that could propel silver to unprecedented heights. Stay with us as this journey into the heart of the silver market promises insights and opportunities that transcend the conventional boundaries of investment. But back on track, <clears throat> the futures market runs all the commodities. So the big question is, what is the key? And the key is that the demand on the investment side the last couple of years has been retail. If you go back to 2020, the demand for silver on the institutional side was 320 million ounces. 
And if we go back in time and look at the Davos, now better known as World Economic Forum, and uh, Bloomberg's finance guys were there interviewing different people. I inter interviewed a gentleman named Scott Meaner, who was the chief investment officer for Guggenheim. And they asked him what's his go-to investment in 2020. And his answer was silver. And they just about fell off their chairs. And <clears throat> 320 million ounces was bought in the ETFs that year. Uh, Scott Meaner is no longer with us. I'm not saying that Guggenheim bought all of that. But what I am suggesting is it's very unusual to have the rallies that we've had from 2020 till now. And yes, it's gone up and down, but there's been substantive rallies that any algorithm would pick up on. And yet the institutions that run those algorithms don't seem to be playing the game. Because if they were playing the game, the ETFs would be added to like they were in 2020, and they are not. They are draining out. So it doesn't make any sense as far as what the institutions are doing. So I could suggest for your consideration, asking yourself, why are they giving up silver out of those locations and you can answer your own questions is that the last you know is that the last resort you can't get it from anywhere but an etf uh, the lbma or comex certainly most retail and in institution i mean there's big family offices and some sovereign wealth funds and some pension funds that own silver very very few but some and usually these are very tightly held and they're not willing to depart with silver at $23 an ounce when the average price for a primary silver producer is about the same. I mean, that's a break even. You don't invest to break even. You invest especially in silver for economic uncertainty. So I think I answered the question. It doesn't make sense. Institutions are not participating. I mean, if you want to put on a tinfoil hat, you might even ask this question, you know. Has the word been put out uh, not to touch the silver market on an institutional basis? You know, I don't know. I'm not suggesting that's true. I just, you know, I'm, I'm opening up my thought pattern to everybody that's watching Liberty and Finance right now because the amount of offtake is so strong that the price not to move can only be met if there's enough above ground supply to meet that demand which it has been up until now, but will it be a week from Tuesday? And I'm trying to be funny here, Dunnigan, but it doesn't look like there's a lot left. And for that demand to be met, Diving into the industrial realm reveals silver's happen. pivotal role beyond its luster and allure as a precious metal. This element, cherished for centuries for its reflective beauty and as a store of wealth, harbors another dimension of value, its unmatched industrial utility. Silver's unique properties, including the highest electrical and thermal conductivity of all metals, make it indispensable in myriad applications, from renewable energy technologies to the latest electronic devices. This demand from the industrial sector is not just significant, it's a driving force that could dramatically reshape the market dynamics of silver. As we stand on the brink of a green revolution, with the world pivoting towards sustainable energy solutions, silver's role becomes increasingly paramount. Solar panels, a cornerstone of renewable energy, rely on silver for their photovoltaic cells. The surge in green energy initiatives globally hints at an exponential increase in demand for silver, as countries strive to meet their renewable energy targets. This is not mere speculation, it's a trend supported by robust investment in solar infrastructure, underlining a long-term upward trajectory in silver's industrial demand. But the story doesn't end with renewable energy. Silver's antibacterial properties are harnessed in medical applications, and its electrical conductivity is essential in the burgeoning field of electronics, from smartphones to electric vehicles. Each of these sectors is on an upward trend, further tightening the silver supply-demand equation. This burgeoning industrial demand sets the stage for a profound impact on silver prices. As the industrial sector continues to consume a significant portion of silver output, the available supply for investment purposes becomes increasingly constrained. This scenario, where industrial demand collides with investment demand, lays the groundwork for potential price surges, making silver an even more attractive asset for investors. Here's a call to action for those considering the role of silver in their investment portfolio. Look beyond its traditional allure as a hedge against inflation or a safe haven asset. Consider the explosive potential of its industrial applications. The current market conditions, 
characterized by growing industrial demand against a backdrop of limited supply, present a compelling case for silver's inclusion in a diversified investment strategy. In this context, I pose a reflective question to you. How do you view silver's industrial demand in the context of your investment decisions? Does this facet of silver's value proposition alter your perception of its future price trajectory? As we prepare to conclude our exploration of the silver market, we'll synthesize these insights into a comprehensive understanding of why now, more than ever, silver presents an opportunity not just to safeguard wealth but to significantly enhance it. Stay with us as we draw our conclusions and outline a strategic approach to navigating the silver market in the upcoming finale of our series. As we approach the climax of our journey through the labyrinth of the silver market, we arrive at a critical juncture, the synthesis of insights and the formulation of a strategic vision for navigating the future of silver investment. The threads of our exploration, from dwindling inventories and industrial demand to legislative shifts and market manipulation, weave together a narrative that positions silver not merely as an asset, but as a beacon of potential in a rapidly evolving economic landscape. The prediction of silver reaching $3,000 an ounce once a bold assertion now emerges as a possibility grounded in a confluence of compelling factors. The surge in industrial demand, particularly from the renewable energy sector, coupled with increasing recognition of silver's monetary value, sets a foundation for unprecedented price movements. This scenario is further bolstered by the constraints on supply, both from mining output and above-ground stocks, creating a perfect storm for price escalation. In this context, the strategy for investors is clear. The time to consider silver is now. This isn't merely about capitalizing on a short-term trend, but about recognizing and positioning oneself within a ship towards tangible assets that offer both security and substantial growth potential. The emphasis on diversification becomes paramount, suggesting that silver should not only be viewed as a component of a broader investment portfolio, but as a critical asset class in its own right. For those looking to navigate this terrain, the call to action involves a multifaceted approach. Firstly, consider the allocation of physical silver as a hedge against currency devaluation and inflation. The tangible nature of silver, coupled with its industrial and monetary roles, provides a layer of security in an uncertain financial world. Secondly, explore opportunities in silver mining stocks and ETFs, which offer leverage to the silver price movement. These investments, while inherently more volatile, present the potential for significant returns as the silver market tightens. Yet, with opportunity comes caution. The volatility of the silver market, influenced by both macroeconomic forces and sector-specific dynamics, requires a diligent approach. Investors should remain informed, agile, and prepared to adjust their strategies in response to market developments. This includes keeping a pulse on industrial trends, legislative changes, and the broader economic indicators that influence precious metals markets. As we conclude, let's revisit the provocative notion that initiated our journey the prospect of silver reaching $3,000 an ounce. While the future remains uncertain, the analysis underscores a clear message. The factors aligning in favor of silver are both powerful and persuasive. For those willing to embrace the complexity of the silver market, the rewards could be transformative. Yeah, it's been uh, advantageous for precious metals investors to swap gold into silver above 80, 85. Uh, <clears throat> historically, we're there now. If you're going to enter the market, you're much better if you have patience to buy silver rather than gold at this point. One thing I want to point out that um, you know I, I lectured on several years ago and was what if silver were treated like gold? And the basis is where is gold? And gold's you know pretty much near an all-time high. And why is that? Well, demand. And you know we just went through the demand thing, which doesn't make sense with silver. With gold, it sort of does because gold has been coveted by the central banks in 2022, buying at a 40 or 50 year record. 2023 looks like it's on track to be similar. Uh, so far, 2024, we don't have enough data. But central banks have been buying gold. It's money of last resorts. They put it on their balance sheets, tier one ass asset since Basel three. And all these things are favorable to gold. And gold is actually a mainstream investment, even though no one will admit it because, you know, they want to keep it quiet. They don't want the public involved. They certainly don't want gold to go rogue. They want to keep it under, you know, their management. However, none of that applies to silver. But if silver were act acted or was treated as if it was a monetary metal and they had to keep a certain ratio of silver to gold, 
then of course there'd be a lot of buying pressure in silver by the banking system. Again, there isn't. There's really no central bank that has any subsidy of silver to my knowledge. India used to, none of it was LBMA grade. It was oh, 90%-ish. It wasn't very much. Uh, but yet, as a monetary asset, uh, not in the you know, banking system, but held by the public and needed by industry to the level that it's needed now, uh, there's still a great deal of demand. And if any uh, pseudo institutions or large money, we could say, you know, pension funds, even a bank. I mean, there's nothing to say that the Bank of India wouldn't say, you know, we want silver. You know, we're going to use it as a monetary asset or whatever. It's such a, a precious commodity, and it's in such short supply relative to historical standards where uh, any significant buying will definitely force the price higher at some point. And I say that at some point is this year. But remember, I used the word significant. If you're able to, through the psychological operations on the monetary system at large convince people that you need to have a piece of plastic or something on your phone and that digits are the only thing that matters, then perhaps my life's work is going to go out the window. I'm saying that tongue in cheek somewhat, but nonetheless, money is either substance or it's not. Anytime it's been just a legal construct, there's been problems. Whenever it's been specie, there hasn't been nearly as many problems. So coming back to basics is an economics lesson I think is still in our near future. We traverse the intricate landscape of the silver market, unpacking layers of complexity from industrial demand to geopolitical movements, and peering into the potential future where silver could ascend to $3,000 an ounce. This journey underscores not just the volatility and opportunity within the silver market, but also illuminates the broader economic and technological trends shaping our world. As we encapsulate our exploration, the narrative converges on a crucial insight. The potential for silver to redefine investment portfolios is not only grounded in its current value, but in its future promise. The convergence of shrinking supplies, burgeoning industrial applications, and the movement towards honest money presents a compelling case for the increased valuation of silver. For investors, the strategy moving forward is multifaceted. It encompasses a balanced approach that values not just the potential for economic gain, but also the intrinsic value silver holds within the evolving landscape of global finance and technology. This strategy should be adaptive, recognizing the fluid dynamics of the silver market and the broader economic indicators that influence its trajectory. Investors are encouraged to not only diversify their portfolios with silver, but to also deepen their understanding of the market forces at play. This includes continuous monitoring of industrial trends that drive silver demand, such as advancements in renewable energy technologies, electronics manufacturing, and medical applications. Equally, staying informed about monetary policies and geopolitical developments that could impact the silver market is crucial. Moreover, engaging with a community of like-minded investors and analysts can provide diverse perspectives and insights, enriching one's understanding and approach to silver investment. The dialogue around silver, its role in the modern economy, and its potential as an investment asset is vibrant and evolving. Participation in this dialogue can be both enlightening and rewarding, as we conclude this exploration, remember that investment in silver, like all investments, carries risk. The vision of silver reaching $3,000 an ounce, while grounded in a robust analysis of market dynamics, remains speculative. Investors should approach this opportunity with both optimism and caution, balancing the potential for significant returns against the inherent uncertainties of the market. In closing, the journey through the silver market is a testament to the metal's enduring value and its potential to play a pivotal role in the future of investment and technology. Whether silver reaches the heights of $3,000 an ounce or carves out a different path, its journey is a compelling narrative of innovation, economic shifts, and the quest for sustainable value in an ever-changing world. Thank you for joining me on this exploration. The silver market, with all its complexities and opportunities, remains a fascinating arena for investors seeking growth, diversification, and a hedge against economic uncertainty. As we look to the future, let silver be a reminder of the importance of adaptability, insight, and strategic planning in the pursuit of investment success. Venturing into the silver market demands a nuanced approach, blending vigilance with strategic foresight. Recognizing the multifaceted nature of silver, spanning its industrial utility, monetary appeal, and speculative dynamics, 
serves as the bedrock for informed investment decisions. Adopting a long-term perspective is crucial, as the potential ascent of silver to $3,000 an ounce hinges not on ephemeral trends, but on deep-rooted economic and technological shifts. Diversification within your silver investments can mitigate risk. This entails spreading your exposure across physical silver, mining stocks, and silver ETFs, each offering distinct risk-reward profiles. Physical silver provides a tangible hedge against inflation and currency devaluation, while mining stocks offer leverage to the price movements of silver, but come with the added volatility of company-specific risks. EPS, on the other hand, offer a blend of accessibility and liquidity, allowing for easier adjustments to your investment stance in response to shifting market conditions. Staying abreast of global economic indicators and sector-specific trends is indispensable. The value of silver is inextricably linked to broader economic health, monetary policy shifts, and industrial demand, particularly from sectors like renewable energy, electronics, and healthcare. Such insights not only inform your investment timing but also provide a gauge on the silver market's responsiveness to external pressures. Engagement with the investor community and ongoing education should underpin your investment strategy. The silver market, with its layers of complexity, benefits from shared insights and diverse perspectives. This community can be a reservoir of knowledge, offering up-to-date analysis and speculative outlooks that refine your investment approach. Finally, a disciplined yet flexible investment philosophy is key. The journey of silver from its current valuation to the speculated $3,000 mark is fraught with uncertainties. A strategy that adapts to market shifts, revaluates positions in light of new information, and remains cognizant of the inherent risks in precious metal investing will be essential for navigating the silver market successfully. As we conclude this exploration, it's clear that the silver market presents a compelling narrative of opportunity, underscored by economic shifts and technological advancements. Whether silver reaches the heights of $3,000 an ounce or charts a different course, its journey underscores the importance of informed strategic investment in capturing growth while safeguarding against volatility.